Hey, so today I am having a one-to-one -one mentoring session with Sean Bartle. Uh, he is one of my personal inner circle graduates and we're going to be doing a deep dive on where Sean is right now, uh, where he wants to go and ultimately um, giving some actions on what Sean needs to be doing over the next couple of weeks. So, uh, Sean, uh, this we will be using for you know YouTube and the podcast. So do you want to introduce yourself, you know, who you are, what you do, what your company is? Uh, tell us a little bit about Sean Bartle. Yeah, sure. So uh, my background is that I'm an accountant and tax advisor. Um, for me, I've always wanted exposure to property as an asset class because you can benefit from capital appreciation long term, as well as obviously getting that monthly cash flow. For me, cash flow is king and it's about creating that passive income that I can use to reinvest in other asset classes. Um, so I'm a big fan of crypto, stocks and shares, gold and silver, just diversify slightly all for different purposes and just take the profit from each asset class and then reinvest it into the one that I think is going to go up the most in the short term and just build that generational wealth so that I can pass it down to my son. He can then take it to the next level that even I couldn't get to. Um, and, you know, for me, I think if you rely on one source of income, whether it's job, self-employment, you're, in my opinion, one step away from disaster. Yeah. Something like COVID-19 happens and it, it can be game over. There's so many people that got hurt who, you know, I know I personally know people that were earning six figures back in Essex and they they were panicking. You know, their job was they was put on furlough. They was told that the department people, you know, would get made redundant, etc. So these guys went from thinking they was living a very good lifestyle to suddenly wondering how they're going to pay their bills at the end of the month. Mm. So for me, that's not something I ever want to experience. So I'm part of a tax firm, it's a startup. We're working very hard with building that up. It's very exciting. There's a lot of business involvement from my perspective. But for me, property is the real thing that's going to help secure my fi financials for the future. Great. So no, good, mate. Yeah. Good. Well, you know, as always, mate, I, I love having these one-to-one -one sessions with you. Um, you know, you've got full access to me and my business partner, Jay, uh, yeah. has been one of our personal mentees. You're, you're a big part of the community. You've been doing some amazing work over the last couple of months, really uh, laying the foundations. You know, yeah. your company name, your branding, your social media presence, your website, uh, the area that, that you're going to invest in. So, mm -hmm. you know, today is all about you, mate. This is your one to one session. So, um, let's get started what what would you like to cover off today buddy yeah so i guess obviously i've got a social media course we, we were talking about the other day with adam stop um this week that you guys have put on so i guess it's really about what else i could be doing to take that to the next level um and also really about how to attract the right jv partner so obviously as i mentioned we've we've closed our first joint venture partner within four months of joining in a circle right and you know I would never have known about that if it wasn't for having the access to you and Jay so and the that, guys so there. Let, 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 let's just, just so I'm crystal clear on who that partner is and how you've structured it. Yep. So you've got your first JV partner secured into your property business. Yep. So uh, how did you find that JV partner and yep. how much money have they said they're going to invest? And do you know how you're going to structure that? Are they putting all the money, you're doing the work, doing a 50-50, or are they lending the money and you're giving a fixed rate return? Yeah, sure. So this person I actually met at a networking event. And the reason that this person approached me is because I was quite vocal at the event. Um, just, you know, asking questions, just getting involved. Because I, money follows attention. So the more engagement I had with the person running the course, the more that people in the class were coming up to me and asking questions, um, not investment advice, just asking about my experience and all that type of stuff. And this person just approached me and said, can we go for a chat on one of the lunch breaks? They outlined that they had property already, but they didn't really know what they was doing with it. You know, they were sitting on a lot of equity and the monthly cash flow was fine, but it wasn't what it could be given where they told me they were, some of these properties were based. You know, they was just in a straight buy to let where it's cracked. One of them should definitely have been service accommodation. Um, so they're leaving money on the table. So it was about putting their capital with us and doing a joint venture that's set up as a company. So it's not going to be um, 
a fixed rate return. This is going to be a 50-50 partnership. Right. They said they'll commit up to 200k. No. Um, so yeah, it's, it's you know it's a big it's a big big amount. It doesn't mean the first property is going to be all in 200, but the point is if something comes up that's around that mark, we can get it. Um, whereas at the moment with our own capital, that's slightly above what we'd be able to do. So the whole purpose of this is that we can take what we're doing to the next level yeah, and just basically leveling up. All right. So, so, so basically the way that the structure is going to work, you will, and just so you're clear, this is what we would normally do in this situation. Yep. Uh, we will set up a limited company mm -hmm. with the private funder. Yeah. They're a director, you're a director, they're a shareholder, you're a shareholder. The shares in that limited company might be owned by your own company or their yeah. company or in a personal name. Obviously, you're the accountant, so you're going to know <laughs> that yeah. the best. All of the ones that I do with my joint venture partners, the shares are owned by my holding company. Yeah. Because then I can move the money up yeah. to that holding company and then decide as and when I want to take uh, dividends or take it out as income. Yep. So, so typically, that's what will happen. Um, they will then lend the money let's just call it two hundred thousand, to that limited company as a director loan yep. and then typically speaking you'll buy that property for cash yeah and obviously the refurb or if you're both mortgageable you could use um use his cash for the 25 percent deposit and then get a bridge or some yeah. type of mortgage and then refinance that way. So you've got two options, either buy the property yeah. cash, or have you discussed if you're gonna do it cash, or if you're gonna try and get a mortgage where you're both on the mortgage? It, it could it could be either. I mean, ultimately, if we was to do a cash purchase, you know, ideally what we're looking for is below market value deal. Um, then my business partner, who's also my stepdad, he's from a construction background. So he would take care of 90% of the reefer which means that our margins are substantially higher because we're not paying another contractor who's going to want to make profit on our profit. So we, we reduce the cost that way, which is fantastic. It's a very good selling point for us. So I guess that was one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today is, in your opinion, based on my company with my stepdad being able to do that, um, what would your suggestion be in terms of the financing? Would, would yeah. all cash do it up? get someone in and re refinance it and pull the money out that way? Or would you would you suggest yeah. actually perhaps look at financing? I, I, I think if you're holding cash, you're probably going to be able to get a better deal buying a property because you're a cash yeah. buyer, so you can yeah. move a lot quicker. Yeah. If the idea with the investor is to pull as much money out or, mo or all of it out when you then remortgage and then just move that into a second deal, the yeah. process would be a lot quicker than trying to get mortgages. Yeah. And if you have the very available cash, then um, I know the properties where you are are like 80, 90, 100, 110K. Yeah. They're all thereabouts, right? So um, we bought 166 Greenstead Road for cash. Yeah. So where we've got the option to do that, we'll do it knowing that we'll, we'll just keep flipping that cash into the next deal. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we want to do. Is it's not just with this with this joint venture partner. We don't just want to do one deal. The idea is that we're going to build a portfolio together. Well, what what I would then look to do to get your money going further is do the first one and get that done and dusted. Yep. Really look after the investor, build the relationship, get him involved, do the work, yep. and then what I would do is once you've refinanced and got your money out of the first one. Mm -hmm. If the relationship is solid, then you might say, hey, look, let's be a bit more aggressive now. Let's take the 200,000 and use 50,000 pounds as deposit plus refurb, but now let's do four properties. Yeah. Properties. And yeah. then you can go and get a bridge or some type of mortgage, yeah. depending if it's obviously mortgageable or not, but let's just call it a bridge. Mm -hmm. And then you can then scale. But certainly for the first one, first one or two, just yeah cash. yeah that's it yeah that, that makes sense i mean that was kind of where my my gut instinct was going anyway uh, yeah. in terms of the structure you, um, did you apply or have you told the investor that there's a sourcing fee and a project management fee attached to yeah. this yeah so in terms of it there's there's there will be project management on my side in terms of that like consultancy for the 
taken off the tax and business side of things, obviously the admin goes with that. And then there would be a separate fee for the work that my stepdad does. In terms of the refurb work, now obviously it's not going to be a huge margin because that would defeat the whole purpose of what we're trying to achieve. But it's just that cash flow for him, because obviously he's going to get materials. Yeah. There is his labour element to it, because you know he could be out there doing a private job if needed. Um, so yeah, that's all been discussed. Yeah, the way the way, I, the way the way I do it, because you've got to class your dad, and what he does is a completely separate entity. Yeah, you know, he's the builder. Yeah, going to quote for the work. Mm -hmm. His building company has to put a margin on it. Yeah, but that's completely fair enough. Um, what I would do is say to the JV partner, um, you know, because there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes, we we apply a probably where you are maybe a three or four thousand pound sourcing fee yeah so you get paid that on completion mm -hmm. and then because we're doing we'll, we'll then charge a, a 10 percent project management fee on top of build cost yeah okay and then obviously your dad's building company or, or whatever it is they just they just quote for the work and you know it's thirty thousand pounds yeah your company with your joint venture partner pay the thirty thousand, and then your company take a 10 percent um you know project management fee well the, the point is there's loads of different ways to do it yeah the important thing is even though he's putting in all the money remember you're doing all the work yeah um you're bringing a lot of value to the table so you just need to make sure you've got some type of cash flow that you can generate mm -hmm. um, for finding the deal and then doing the work and then obviously yeah. you Split the ownership and then you'll split the rental income 50 50. Yeah, yeah. And is that a tip? I, I find from obviously all the study materials and the courses, etc., that team seems to be a very good structure for a deal. So that's kind of the route I want to go down. Um, yeah. And I mm -hmm. guess for me, you know, as you said, look after him and look at perhaps doing two or three properties with that money once we've got the first deal over the line. Yeah. And then from there, it's about wanting to replicate that with other people as well and, and taking that to the next level so but you know i'd love to in 18 months time i'd love to have three or four jv partners on that type of structure yeah okay and cool so i think one of the points you wanted to raise was how to go and find more investors or the right yeah. investor yeah yeah exactly um so it's a really really good question and this this is going to help lots of people tuning into this now um the ideal investor is the type of person that I can work with and they can work with me. Yeah. I'm not necessarily looking always for high net worth investors and unless they are doing more of a 50 50 JV and they're coming in on the company. Yeah. Most of the stuff that we do now, we do on loan agreements. Okay. So fixed rate return. Yeah. Fixed rate return is typically what we do. So I can help someone that is coming up to retirement that's got 50k in the bank and they want to top up the income they're going to make for retirement yeah. i can also help a 19 year old student at university that's looking to get their money working for them yeah so i don't necessarily have an ideal candidate um avatar where they've got to be over 45 they've got to be married yeah. I don't have that it's like is there the connection I want to make sure that I'm not taking food off the table. So yeah. you have to be ethical when you're working with private funders. Mm -hmm. Are they the type of person that I can work with long term? Do I generally feel like I'm going to help them? Yeah. And, I, and am I putting their money into the right project? And is there a, a good connection? Um, I've had an opportunity a few years ago to work with someone extremely wealthy. They would earmarked two million pounds for us. Wow. <laughs> but 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 the guy was just a dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you knew that. I guess you knew he was going to be a headache, right? He was going to be a headache, and yeah. he was, you know he, he thought he was going to own me, and I, I didn't like his attitude and the way he spoke to people. Yeah, yeah. So so it was a hard decision, but I I, I politely declined the money after many sleepless nights because I wanted yeah. to get money to be. Yeah, of course. I mean that'd be be um, massive, wouldn't it? But so for me, it's yeah, about it it's for me, it's all about building relationships mm -hmm. with friends, family members, business associates, going networking, like literally network, 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 you know, yeah. network events are open again now. 
uh, get yourself to charity events, like make it one of your key focuses to become a prolific networker yeah. in your local area. There's, there's, there's tens of millions of pounds in your local area. There's prominent business owners. Yeah. There's probably exclusive business clubs that you can... Uh, yeah, I'm actually to. becoming a member of... Uh, it's, it's based in Bristol called the Clifton Club. Uh, wow. Clif Clifton Village is kind of like the, the West End in London, but in Bristol, uh, there's a lot of wealth there and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I'm looking to network there for my tax firm, but also there's going to be elements where someone might not want tax advice, but they could be someone who's potential JV partner. Yeah, ama amazing. Yeah, I think I think that's, and, and it's about being consistent and being yeah. hungry. And a lot of people, they want the money, but they're not hungry enough. They're not consistent yeah. enough. They go to one networking event every six weeks and it's like, oh, well, I didn't meet anyone. I just had some tea and coffee. Well, you've got to make stuff happen in business. You know this, yeah. right? You've got to go, right, I'm going to this event tonight. And these, so what I used to do whenever I went to a networking event, yeah, yeah I liked a cup of tea and a couple of bloody chocolate biscuits, but it was like, right, I'm going to connect with five new people minimum. Yeah five new people i'm going to get their business cards and by the end of tonight i've got two hours i'm on the hunt yeah my role is to connect with at least five new people and by the end of tonight have two coffees booked in the diary okay yeah that makes sense yeah now yeah. if i go to a networking event a week over two months that's 16 coffees yeah if i or you sit in front of 16 people you're going to find money. Yeah, you're going to get. You're going to close at least yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. The the issue is people don't book in the coffees. Yeah, they, they just collect the business cards, and the business cards go in the top drawer. So, so that would be my advice, mate. Is continue to put yourself out there on your socials. Yep. Um, increase the amount of networking that you do in your local areas, mm -hmm. um, wherever possible. Just have the courage and the bollocks, and it does take yeah. courage to just present yourself with your little mini sort of elevator pit so yeah. everyone knows who you are what you do and and i've also had it before and you know other people i work with where they're like freaking hell i need 60 grand quick and, and they've just cold called their phone book yeah but i've done that yeah before. it's not a bad shout i've done that before it's a bit daunting but i, I have yeah. done that before and and raised money from it because there's people in your phone and my phone now that um, have got money they just don't know what i do or they've never been open to that idea and you know it's yeah. my job to say hey look i've not spoke to you in a while but i remember i remember when we spoke or i remember you'd say you know black it a little bit yeah, yeah. You, you're always looking to make money um just like reach out and see where you're at yeah yeah and that's how the first the first two people that have said look we want to come in with you that's exactly what happened they reached out i was like look i've been following you following the journey you've done because uh, we as i said we completed a flip and they see the before and afters and spoke to me about what was going on there and one of them in particular he's already got a little portfolio of properties that he's having a nightmare with um they're based up north so they're four or five hour drive for him um and during lockdown tenants weren't paying he's had this massive issue and he was like look i don't know what i'm doing with it but i still want exposure to real estate and property as an asset class you know, are you open to a discussion to see if there's anything we can do? So he's looking at selling his portfolio, uh, wow. putting 50% of it into a startup that he's involved in. And then he wants to commit funds with us as well and get that money working for him whilst he focuses on his startup. So he knows that if the startup's not generating cash, which can happen quite often, yeah, he's got something there that's generating an income. Um, so I'm just keeping in touch with him because whilst in theory, it's a great idea. Uh, it's not come to fruition yet because he's still going through legals, etc. of his portfolio. So I sort of, you know, because you and I discussed it, he was like, look, keep those touch points regular. Uh, you know, and that, that's what I do. I just jump on Zoom with him, look in the yeah. phone call just to, yeah. I, I've had to have sometimes 18 months of touch points with people before yeah. started with money. Other people, I remember last year, I've, I jumped on a Zoom, I think it was 14 minutes and secured 30,000 pounds, yeah? Yeah. Uh, an afternoon, having a nice steak or a bit of Italian, 700,000 pounds. The thing is, yeah. we don't know where or who our next potential private funder is. 
Mm. Uh, we've just got to keep knocking on the doors. Yeah. Up in the content, messaging people on socials, going networking, keep doing what you're doing on social media. Yeah. But also make sure when you're posting on social media, people do know that you are, you know, if you went and done 10 posts around property, business and mindset, but you made no reference to the fact that you work with private funders. Yeah. Then you can deliver the best content in the world, but if there's no call to action or you're not actually making it clear what you do and how you can help people. Yeah. Then, then they're still none the wiser. So, yeah. um, you know, I would be doing some posts and some lives and some videos talking about the portfolio builder talking about the savings accelerator or whatever yeah. you've called yours yeah about the benefits of partnering with someone in property yeah. uh, talking about your unique selling points and why someone should do business with you why someone should become a private funder uh talking about um how you met one of your investors that's always really good you tell the story of how yeah you say Man, I woke up this morning and I, I, I just want to share with everyone today how I met my last investor. You don't have to say yeah, that's good. First. Yeah. You're not lying. You just said how I met my current investor or my last investor. And I thought yeah. this would be really helpful to anyone else out there. So what you're doing is you're sharing your experience on how you did that. Yeah. But the underlying message that you're putting out there is come and work with me. I work with investors. Yeah. So, so it is a call to action without it being direct, isn't it? I guess because, yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's yeah. definitely what I need to focus on more. Yeah. You're teaching through the ultimate call to action. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes sense. So obviously, with the course I'm going on this week, um, plus the stuff we've discussed now and previously, I think I'll be able to to take the social media stuff I'm doing to the next level and that should hopefully get some traction. Yeah, great. Yeah. So you're you're going to be attending um, Adam's three day business and marketing boot camp. So Adam's, as you yep. know, is one of my business partners. Um, yeah. Prolific on social media, prolific at sales. Uh, we're launching the business and marketing academy with Adam, which is going to be the most exclusive business and marketing training anywhere in the UK. So yeah, you're going yeah. to embark on three days of the UK's best um, social media marketing business training. So one of the things that I'm starting to do now, more than I was a year ago or even three months ago, yeah. is really try and build up uh, what we call omnipresence. Yeah. And literally just be freaking everywhere. Yeah. 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 Across Definitely. many social media platforms that my team can handle. Now, when you're doing it initially on your own, obviously there's only so much you can do. And one of the things that you'll do, Sean, as you build up cash flow, is you'll eventually invest into a social media manager or yeah. you invest into an editor. Um, so I've got a whole team that does this now for me, but you can take and you'll see this start happening in the next few weeks. Like I record one YouTube or podcast video. Let, let's take this for example. Yeah. Um, this is being recorded now for a podcast and also to go onto the YouTube channel. But my team will take this footage yeah. And then they'll cut it down into smaller chunks for TikTok, Reels, Facebook, Instagram, banner it up. Yeah. So one 30 or 40 minute mentoring session can turn into seven, eight, nine different pieces of social media content. Yeah. And I guess that can be spread out over a set time period as well, can't it? So rather than just banging it all out in a week, yeah. you can spread that out, you know, one part of it a week for two months and you know do other posts at the same time yeah that's definitely what i need to focus on and start doing more of that um start doing more of the lives done a few um because i do post a lot but, you know we'll, we'll always, you always comment on it as well I, think I just need to take it to the next level and be more more vocal with it um obviously i'm very passionate about sharing my knowledge on money the history of money where how we've got to where we're at now with it yeah i think not so yeah. something I'm going to say, you know, you don't do lives, do you? I've not seen you do. No, I've, I think I've only done three since joining in a circle. So that's, you so, know, it's not so even one a month, which isn't enough. 
No, so as of now, you've got to do a live, right? Yeah. All right. So yeah. in terms of time, what are you hoping to, I know you create content. Are you currently creating one post a day? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do one post. There's probably been the odd day where I've not done a post, um, but predominantly I post every day. Okay. So in terms of starting a Facebook live challenge, mm -hmm. how many a week would you feel comfortable doing? I try and do a post every day, so I guess if I try and do three a week. Yeah, okay. Let's let's go. I was hoping you'd say three. I was going to set you three just to get you warmed up, right? Yeah. So what I want you doing starting today. Yep. And we're going to go through. Write this on my iPad, yeah. Write this down, mate. Yep. So starting today, you're going to schedule in your diary three lives a week, plus your normal yep. content. So this is on top of your daily post. Okay. So you do one today, maybe do one Thursday, do one Saturday. Yep, okay. And then you do three next week as well. Yep. So that would be six. Tag me in on the post. Yep. I'll have a look at them, give you feedback. Mm-hmm. And we will look to increase that as of September 6th to 5. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I know you've done this with a few others as well. Yeah. Uh, well, even, and, and even seen... Nick, yeah. Even yeah, they've been smashing they, it. They work for me, but they have taken everything I've said. Yeah. They are, they are doing it. Uh, Nick Stubbs is doing it right now. Yeah, I've seen, I see his stuff. Even yeah. though he's on holiday, he's still smashing yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm setting the target, mate. Yeah. And, uh, we've got Neil and Jackie always do them. Laura's always doing stuff like that. Yep. So what you want to do with your videos, just keep them relatively short, you know, okay. one, three minutes. If you do go over, that's fine. If you get carried away. Yep. And what you want to do is pick like a good heading, like a sexy title, yep. how to never yeah. worry about money again. Okay. Um, why property is essential for legacy build. I, I don't know. Just, just yeah. try and come up because you're really good at creating your, your posts you do are freaking cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Cheers, like yeah. You know your stuff, right? Yeah. And and then what I would do to keep it really simple is you, you share the one big thing, the three, the five or the seven. Yeah. So in okay. this video, I'm going to share with you. Yeah. The one big thing you need to know about tax. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in this, yeah, um, I'm just writing all this down. Yeah, in this video, I'm going to share with you three reasons why passive income is key. Yep. And then you, you don't have to start your video with, hi, it's Sean here. I used to do that. Don't do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can just introduce your name a little bit later down in the video, yeah? Yeah. If people don't care actually who you are at the moment. Yeah, they no, they just want to know what you're saying, yeah. You've got to hook them, right? Yeah. Hey, in this video, you can give it a bit of a wave on the on the live. Hey, in this video, I'm going to share with you three reasons why you need to focus on passive income. Yeah. Reason number one, and whatever that reason is, and give a bit of content. Reason yeah, yeah. Reason number three. Hey, tag in below. Please like, comment, share. Yep. Get that engagement, right? Get the engagement. Mm -hmm. If you like this video, give me a yes. Yeah. If you want to know, um, yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever, yeah. Try yeah, perfect. Start action in that. And that's all you got to do, mate. Just keep them really simple around content that you are comfortable talking about. Yeah. And you will build some really nice traction, mate. Yeah, I think that's definitely the, the next uh, the next stage of my social media journey um, is to take it to that level because I do a lot of posts, but the, and I get a lot of engagement on them actually. There's always people asking lots of questions and getting engaged with it, but I want to take it to the next level where people are really getting a feel for me as well because, you know, just reading words on the screen is not quite the same as hearing me actually talk and, and go into it. So, yeah, that's definitely going to be a big focus now. I'll get that action 100 percent yeah and then in, in, and then in terms of property stuff uh i yep. know you've done one deal as you were joining us 
which was yep. a hit, but then you were very close to another deal and that fell through. Yeah, that was heartbreaking. <laughs> so, you might be doing this stuff, but just as a, a kick-ass reminder, yep. all volume-based. Yeah. So you've got to be making enough phone calls on a regular, consistent basis out to those agents. Yeah. And just literally be obsessed with building those relationships and also don't worry too much about the asking price. Yeah. You just work the numbers based on how the deal stacks for you. Yeah. And just so you know, Neil and Jackie will tell you this as well, but pretty pretty much um, every offer we put out there gets rejected. Yeah, yeah. So they, they come back to us in two or three months' time when they still can't sell them or the buyers come out, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's it. They're, they're, see, you, you're at the forefront. I mean, something I've done it, it, with one of the local estate agents, and I'm trying to replicate with the others, I've actually got to the point with it now that they contact me before something goes on. Or just as it's going live, like it might literally have just gone on the website and 10 minutes later, they've called me and they're like, look, Sean, got something here. In some cases, like it's not quite what you given us the spec for but here it is anyway and even if it's not something i'm massively keen on or i can look at it and be like oh, no i'm not interested i'll still go and view it yeah because i know that they have targets to hit in terms of viewings um and it gives me that chance to be in person for five ten minutes with the agent to just have that chat of okay this isn't quite what i'm looking for because of xyz but you know are you seeing anything like abc coming onto the market um, and just keep that before going. And that, that's worked really well. So I just need to do that and replicate that with other estate agents that's as well. Outrageous. Yeah. yeah. So if you could rate yourself between zero and 10 right now, mm -hmm. where you are um, zero being useless, like 10, you're freaking on it, uh, in terms of finding deals, building relationships, making calls, going into agents, where would you rate yourself? Uh, activity wise, it's gotta be it's gotta be eight. I'm, I'm on it every day. Um, there's, a, there's at least, three action points a day that I set that will be some type of whether it's a call email whatever it is I will action um, I'm very strict like that a lot of people said I should have been in the army because I'm, I'm I'm very everything is very military precision with me um, it's very structured it which kind of makes sense with me being an accountant I guess everything you know your ducks in a row um, for me I find it quite natural to be like that so it's not onerous for me to try and be active like that it's just something i like to do i'm always posting about taking massive action daily um i don't just post that to try and prop people up i do it because you're doing it i'm doing it yeah and, and whilst you know i've not got a huge portfolio yet i'm nowhere near where i want to be the, the point is I'm, i know how to get there i've got you guys helping massively um and it's just about taking that action to get there it's not going to happen overnight a lot of people get a bit i think they're getting a bit denial that they think They'll try something if it doesn't work after a month oh, it's, it, you know it doesn't work and all this type of stuff it's like no it's going to take time um so yeah i i would say probably an eight okay, good 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 so really make more of the same yeah um, definitely check out more networking events local to you um yeah. i've set you the facebook live challenge starting yep. today and yeah uh, we'll be doing that next week You've got three-day business and marketing boot camp with Adam. Uh, I'm sure I'll be popping my head in the door. Yeah, it'd be good to catch one, up. With you've got a one-to-one -one booked in. Um, you're coming to the studio. Is that September yeah. October? No, it's October, isn't it? So we've got... Right. Well, we, we, we'll have another... It's either the 7th or 8th, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll get another yeah, one in, right. one of these done. For, for sure, mate. Yeah, just, just keep WhatsApping me. Let yep. me know what's going on. Any questions that you have, mate. Yeah. And um, the moment you just want to jump on one of these, just, just, just let me know and we'll, we'll jump on. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got some great value, please give me a like, comment, share, tune in to more of my videos, and it will be a pleasure to get to meet you one day in the future so we can collaborate, connect. If I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for tuning in. You've been brilliant. I've been Liam Ryan, and I'll see you very soon.